episode 17 of the podcast. Today is all about nail trimming. In the first part, we're going to talk about the importance of nail trimming, because if you're not a groomer or a vet, you might not understand how important healthy nails are. And in the second part, we're going to talk about, is nail trimming really scary for most dogs? Because you might be surprised. This is the Creating Great Grooming Dogs podcast. I'm Chrissy Newmeyer-Smith. I'm a certified professional groomer, a certified behavior consultant for canines, and a certified professional dog trainer. And this, my friends and colleagues, is the podcast where grooming and training meet. I want to talk about the importance of nail trimming. And because I think a, a lot of groomers understand it, but not many other people do. So groomers hang in there so that you have some other ways to describe it for people. Um, but the importance of nail trimming is that the dog's body weight should be supported by the pads of their feet. So when the nails are too long, the toes flatten or bend. And I want you to think about um, almost like wearing a shoe that's kind of become lopsided, like how that would affect your gait, how that affects your back or your knees. I don't know if you've ever had problems like that, but I have where I'm like, oh, <laughs> feel a world better with a different shoe. But um, when the toes flatten or bend, it can cause problems all the way up their leg. It's putting twists on a joint. It can, it can make their, their feet really quite sore, which is why some of these dogs continue to be really weird about their nails because their toenails are actually kind of sore. Their, feet, their toes are sore. Their toes have been flattening or twisting. But it also goes all the way up the leg. You know, think about how it's going to throw off everything else about their shoulders about their back. So nail trimming is super important. It's not just about if you hear their nails on the floor, there's so much more to it. And how often should nails be done? And my general rule of thumb, I mean, every dog is different. My general rule of thumb though, is that for a dog with a really good length nail, about once a month. And um, that's to maintain a good length. So if the nails become long, it should be more often until it's at a good length. And, um, and the dog can stand with their paw in a natural position. And that's what I mean by a good length, that when they're, when they're standing, they're able to have their, their legs properly under them <laughs> and, and not have this excessive bending or, or, or kind of like the, the flattening of their front legs. I think we've all seen that at some point where their front legs start to flatten along with their toes. They kind of look like they're running on flippers. <laughs> and uh, some of our dogs are, are just have a, a, a build that is going to have problems anyway. I mean, I, like, I think about like losses instantly as dogs that often have very crooked front legs. But keeping a nail at a good length is really part of health and comfort. So if you do it about once a month to maintain that good length, that's usually about right for most dogs. I will tell you, my last dog, though, she was a toenail farm. If it were a cash crop, we'd be great because I could seriously take more off every single week. There was always more nail coming off. Um, so every dog is different. I also know dogs that never need it. They just tend to wear them down on their own. But it has nothing to do with wearing them down because they walk on pavement a lot. You know, that that's kind of a myth. I know plenty of dogs that walk around on pavement and run around on rocks and, and they still need nail trims. So now that you know how often they should be done, if you're a trainer, I want you to be thinking, okay, so this is, this is important and kind of not something we can spend a huge amount of time training on. I mean, we can, we can certainly train their whole lifetime, but we can't avoid a nail trim for very long. Um, so there has to be some sort of a, all right, how can we put some urgency into this training? Because <laughs> a couple of months could be some real changes in a dog's foot. Again, not trying to play vet, but this is what I have observed. This is the knowledge I have gained over the years that nail trims are just super important for, for body structure. So the process is to trim and shape the nail. And so I think a lot of the time, especially owners are thinking, well, you just snip it off, snip, 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 snip. But in a grooming setting, what we're doing is we're actually trying to trim it and shape it because cutting the nail close to the quick, which is the blood supply, means that the quick is going to recede a little bit. And Mother Nature has this great design where she doesn't want all of her little wild creatures bleeding all over the place. So when we when a nail gets quicked or gets trimmed really short or starts being, you know, ripped apart running on stone, um, there's always another little layer of, 
hardness over the end. So the quick will continue to recede so that some of that can be protective on the end. So if you are trimming a nail and it's been very, very long and you just go and do one clip, boom, and it looks like a sawed off tree stump, that's not going to help get the nails really short. So if they've been quite long, ideally we want to shape the edges too so that it looks more like a tapered nail, not a sharp tapered nail, but a, a tapered nail so that the that quick can recede more because the quick will recede too if it's too close to the sides of the nail. So that's where shaping comes in and that could be with using the clippers and just doing multiple clips on the same nail. That could be the first large amount taken off of the clipper and then the rest filed or using a grinder. But I want you to be thinking to um, more than just snip and it's done. For most dogs, I really like doing a lot of shaping on any dog that will let me. I, I really like a nice meticulous nail trim. Um, if they can't, of course we want to do whatever they can manage, but our end goal has to be there. We have to be thinking, how are we going to help this dog for its future, for the 15 years it's going to be alive, um, you know, whatever is left of that 15 years, <laughs> you know, even if it's a 12-year-old dog, we still need to be thinking about this is future 12 times a year right? At least. Um, so I want you to think too, when we're talking about nail trimming, I want you to kind of draw a parallel with like a horse going to the farrier. So it's not like we're just taking a little bit of nail off. We're actually working toward symmetry and helping make sure that that dog is in good health. Some of the things that you will notice trimming nails, which is why we need a dog to be quiet and calm for us, is that we want to take some time to take a look. One of the indicators if a dog has been limping is if their nails are worn down unevenly. Um, and so front nails will wear down differently than back nails. So as long as both front legs are wearing down evenly to each other and back legs are wearing down evenly to each other, that's usually pretty normal. But if the left back foot has nails that are much shorter than the right back foot, that means we would like for you to go see the vet, find out if this dog is limping, if this dog is having some sort of an issue, because those should be wearing down pretty evenly. Or it might be that like one toe on the outer edge is getting too long, um, you know, which might just be that a leg is twisting out. So we're looking for symmetry. We're trying to make sure it's a nice, healthy nail. We also get in between the toes and double check that there's nothing in there. So it's really important and it's more than just do a couple snips, which is why when we're talking about how we do it is really important. Why I want dogs to be comfortable with it, calm, cooperative, and passively cooperative, not passing their foot to me. Sometimes I do it from above. Sometimes I do it from below. Sometimes I need to... Um, See from both views, depending on what it is I'm noticing with that dog's foot or what that dog thinks is comfortable. So I think that sometimes we're thinking, oh, we'll hold that front paw out in front of the dog. And some dogs find that really much scarier than just lifting their paw the other way, almost like picking up horse hooves, like picking their paw up in a more natural way. Um, so when you think about the ability to get their nails healthy, being part of their overall comfort and health, then I think it helps us remember this is a significant problem. This isn't a, we bring him in once a year, whether, he, you know, when we hear it clicking because we know it stresses him out, like we can't do once a year nail trims on most of these dogs. There are crippling effects to having super long nails. And in some of these dogs, when they have lots of fur, around their feet. Sometimes you don't even see what's going on with their nails. Some nails will start to curl. Usually it's if, if it's kind of packed with hair. Um, I'm kind of thinking of like cocker spaniel feet. If they have a lot of hair around there and, and their, their nails start curling and they've kind of been walking around in slippers and they have curled nails, but sometimes nails can curl back into the pad, um, which is no longer a grooming job. If a nail is growing in to a pad or or something else or into the side of the toe, that's a veterinary job. Off to the vet. That's that's actually a, a pretty significant problem because we want to make sure that that can be medicated and flushed out and make sure that there's no infection going on, anything else that might have happened, including it could be a symptom of a broken toe. So I want you to be thinking about the general health of the dogs as part of this nail trim. 
and part of this importance with having us doing nails. And in the second part, we're going to talk about why it's so difficult for some dogs. If you're enjoying my podcast, please remember to subscribe so that you don't miss any episodes. A dog who is calm, comfortable, and cooperative and passively cooperative is really just better for everything. Everything that the owner may need to do to them, everything that the vet may need to do to them, and everything that the groomer may need to do with them. But I want you to think too that, um, especially with nail trimming, nail trimming is such a common thing. Um, I want to explain to you that a calm dog, when I have a dog who I have now helped to become calm, that I've taught them to be calm, and I'm working with them on being calm, when they are calm and I snip a nail, they don't react to it. How interesting, right? Because I think most of us assume that that's been the issue, is that it's a fear of having the nail trimmed. And that is not my experience. Um, it, for most dogs, the fear is being held in such a way that they're uncomfortable, like that they aren't used to being held and, and kind of positioned that way and have somebody work on some fine little detail work. So I want you to think about, um, because nail trims are so important, teaching a dog to be really, really good and calm for being touched all over is the basis of everything we need to do. And you may hear stories, I, I know I do, customers will tell me like, oh, he hates it when we do his nails, or he's bad for his feet. And those are stories. Those are subjective. What happens? What do you observe? What have your customers observed that led them to say he hates it when he gets his nails done? Because that's where we're going to find the information we need to teach this dog to be good. Um, I think we often get tunnel vision because certainly other groomers tell me, oh, this dog's terrible for his nails. But we get tunnel vision. When we're working on nails, we just start thinking the dog was having a hard time with it. It must be a problem with nail trimming, right? Because that's what's on our mind at that moment. We're not thinking restraining for nail trimming or positioning for nail trimming or holding feet for nail trimming. It's in our head that we're doing nail trimming and this dog is having a hard time with it. So simply teaching him about touching his toe doesn't address the full problem. The full problem is being held and reached around and having feet picked up and holding legs and holding feet and holding toes and holding toenails. So I want you to think about the observations being really important. What if it's a matter of just knowing how to have someone reach over you, lift your foot, line up the clippers and wait till you're calm and just snip. Because most dogs are actually okay with that. If I can get them calm, the nail trim doesn't scare them. The nail trimming doesn't hurt. And actually, I think that's an important point too, especially for people who aren't groomers, because I think sometimes they're like, oh, well, you know, I mean, it's, he's getting his nails trimmed. But unless they bleed, or unless you trim them too short, or unless that dog has a problem with its toe, it's just nail trimming. There's, there's nothing about that that hurts. You need a nice sharp pair of nail trimmers. So if you're, if you're using a dull pair, um, that might hurt. But we're talking about if they go to a professional groomer. So, um, so for you guys at home who are, who are just working with your own dog, make sure you have a nice sharp pair of, of nail trimmers. But it's not necessarily the toenail clipping off, that click sound, that freaks them out. And I think because that's what we're laser focused on in that moment, that's what we assume they must be fighting us for. But really the fight is often just because we're in this weird, you know, angle with them and we're holding them differently and we're lining something up next to their toe and we're staring at their toe in a way that their owners never do. So look at the things that we can observe. So one of the things that I think happens an awful lot is that, um, owners will assume that dogs hate having their feet touched. A friend of mine told me this the other day. She said, oh, but dogs hate having their feet touched. I'm like, that's, that's quite a statement, isn't it? You know, I just don't think that that's really true. I think that most dogs need to learn to be touched all over. A lot of dogs don't like being pet on the head either, but we have to teach them to do it. A lot of dogs don't like it if you grab for their collar, but we have to teach them to do it. And part of why we have to teach them to do it and part of why I need you guys to be thinking about the domestic dog, the house pet, is because they're not zoo animals, right? 
nobody brings their tiger home at the end of let's play zoo. Okay, now let's go home. We're going to snuggle on the couch and watch a movie. Like these guys are living in our homes. I want to know that my owners can touch them, right? Anywhere at any time. I want to know that if you roll over in your sleep on the, on the couch and accidentally roll on someone's tail, that dog's not going to rip your face off. They live in our homes. They have a very intimate relationship with us that other animals don't have and we need to hold them to a higher criteria because we are in if we if we don't we're really in some danger right i mean they say that a dog that's 40 to 45 pounds is capable of killing a human right like if they really got it in their head thank god they don't right but that's a large enough animal to be you know like a fox or a coyote attacking you just that we don't think about dogs that way these are creatures that live in our house and we should be able to talk talk to them we should be able to touch them all over we should be able to grapple with them a little bit hold them still so when we're talking about doing you know things like oh dogs are afraid of their feet i think a lot of owners are creating the self-fulfilling prophecy sure dogs hate it when you touch their feet so they never do it or what I find often happens is that they do it in such a way that is really scary or nagging or kind of creepy. <laughs> so uh, I'll ask people, well, show me what he does when you reach down to touch his feet. Tell me what you've been working on. And as a groomer, you can do that at your grooming shop. As a vet's office, you can say, okay, is he good with you? Is this going to be safe for you to do? And if not, like, wow, okay, you've got a big problem if you can't safely show me what he does if he touches feet, right? Wait. That's already a, oh, that's not about nail trimming. But if you say, okay, is he pretty safe with you? You feel safe doing this? And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Great. Show me what you've been doing with their feet. Sometimes they reach out and it's almost like a tickle match. Like, hey, look, feet, 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 feet. I've got your feet. I've got your feet. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. That's nothing like what we need to do in a vet exam or in a grooming shop. Or... It's the other version, which is, all right, well, we get him on the sofa and we slowly massage his feet and we give him cookies the whole time because we don't want him to be afraid. And how creepy is that, right? Like, oh, gosh, if you're so worried that he's going to be afraid the whole time, you're kind of giving off this vibe that this is scary. So we want to make sure that our owners can touch dog's feet. And if they can't, that's a good signal that it's not the nail trim. Like, okay, well, show me what he does if you reach down his leg. Oh, I couldn't possibly do that here. Ooh, interesting. Okay, so is it about the place that we're in? Is, it, is he just so nervous about being at the vet's office or in the grooming shop? And that's where our observations really come in. Okay, what is it about here that makes you think your dog, and what do you think your dog might do? What do you mean he won't let you do that, something like that here? You know, um, I had a customer recently who said to me, she's like, oh, well, you know, I didn't, I, I mean, I can get my dogs to put the muzzle on with me, but not if she doesn't want to. I'm like, well, that's the whole purpose of the muzzle. So you still need to continue with that. Because really, like, we don't need the muzzle on if um, she's in a situation that she loves, right? Like, that's kind of like, okay, that's where you practice it, but you do need to be able to put it on when she doesn't want you to touch her. Because that's what muzzles are for. So it's sometimes it's a matter of us helping our owners understand, oh, right, maybe it's not nail trimming that my dog is freaking out about. If I can't reach down and, like, take a look at his feet, if, um, you know, I see a bloody footprint on the ground, if I need to bring him home to do that on the sofa, well, that's a problem, right? You should be able to check your dog out and on the street. If one of my dogs has something happen on their foot, I should be able to check that anywhere, anytime, any place, back of the car. Um, you know? <laughs> so I find that most dogs are not actually afraid of the nail trimming. So now that we've looked at, all right, what is actually happening versus, oh, it's his nails. Dogs hate having their nails touched, dogs hate having their feet touched, or any versions of dogs hate as our story. Now that we have some observations, now we can use that data, those observations, to come up with a plan for that dog to learn to be comfortable, calm, and cooperative for handling. And by, by handling, I mean being touched all over, legs, feet, toes, nails, and really everything else. Um, the one behavior that I think is most important for husbandry skills is a dog that will let us 
touch them anywhere. And in another podcast episode, I talked about that being the posable action figure. They don't need to actively do anything. I want them to just passively allow me to do stuff to them, with them, above them, below them, um, to help us be able to do stuff for them and help them be comfortable with it. Uh, A dog that can be touched all over is more likely to let an owner take a look and see what's going on if they're bleeding, to take a look in their eye, take a look in their mouth, to pull a pricker out from between their toes. You know, like it's not just about the grooming shop. This is about everybody. And then when we have something new that we have to teach, we just have to teach a tiny part. Like if you already know how to be relaxed and you know how to be calm and cooperative, then we just teach you about the injection part or about the stethoscope or about the light shining into your eye while we check your eyes or about the nail trimming, right? So I want you to be thinking about the nail trimming again as something that's really important for their health and that we need to have um, have ideas in place to help this dog get better with it fast. This isn't something we should take a year doing. They need they need nail trim sooner than that. So if it's going to take a year, that might be I need to start having the veterinarian sedate him for nail trims while we teach him about about how to let us do it because from the nails up right it affects their whole body and it's really really important so hopefully that was helpful to some of you and have a great week and stay curious if you'd like to talk to me you can find me through my grooming and training business happycrittersdogtraining.com my email chrissy at happycritters.net and through the creating great grooming dogs facebook page and we have these awesome devices in our pockets that allow us to do live video with each other i can help you with the dog on your table we can set up live lessons and you may be surprised at how much we can get accomplished together via video i'm also happy to come to you if you're near my area in southern new hampshire